Welcome to Cast and Crank Podcast. Today we have Matt Tom with 86 Baits. Uh, Matt, Matt through Instagram. I just was uh, checking out his uh, uh, Instagram page and he posted a story about a hardcore band that I liked. It was a show he went to in San Diego, I think. And we kind of went back and forth and uh, I said, hey, you want to come on and talk about your baits? He said, all right. So it's a fun episode. You guys will like it. Uh, we do a lot of fucking around, a lot of cussing as usual and uh, beer drinking. And yeah, it was fun. Uh, this week we'll have a bonus episode. So I'm going to try to do one bonus episode a month. And this one is going to be a good one. You guys will like it, especially you offshore guys. This guy's funny. And give us five stars on iTunes if you can. I'd really appreciate that. Leave a review if you can, whatever you want. Just give us five stars. Appreciate it. And that's about it. Thanks guys for listening. Shit like fucking but like two inches from your mouth. Just why you like it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just bring it like this that one? no that one. That one, yeah. You could move it towards you, whatever you want to do. Closer. Good? No, closer. Bring the mic closer. Good? It's gotta be like that far away from your mouth. Now if you want to lean back, just bring it with you. Okay. Like whatever you want to do. Oh man. So let's talk about uh, your baits, bro. Okay. Well, let's talk about like uh, you grew up in Apple Valley. Apple Valley. Yep. Bass fishing? No, not much. Um, no. Most of my fishing early on in life was done in the Eastern Sierras, fly okay. fishing with my dad and my brother. Okay. Yeah. And you grew up that, when did you move down this way? As so, you got older? Yeah. Okay. Uh, graduated from high school in 04. And I... <clears throat> trying to make the music thing work you know were you playing in bands yeah what was the name of your band bro the first one first hardcore one bleeding hearts bleeding hearts do you remember uh bonded by blood bound by blood it sounds gabe, familiar gabe he lived in redlands sounds familiar um let's see so you know the guys from hesperia tons of them yeah okay do you know uh danny the twins the twins pitbull dan Mm-mm. you gotta know pitbull dan they're fsu guys Mm-mm, I don't. I'm from Hesperia, dude. They were in Donnybrook. No, I yeah. don't know them. Never met them, I don't think, anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, because Apple Valley is kind of out that way. What was that club out there? There was a few. There was the Tropicana. That was in Barstow, though. And then there was a ranch out in Apple Valley off of Deep Creek. That's where that's, everyone I played. I think that's the one. It was C- Tweakerville, kind of. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so you were playing in bands and trying to like make it a deal? Yeah, I mean, that's always what I wanted to do. You what, know? Do you, what do you play? Uh, originally guitar. Later on in life, picked up the bass and then back to guitar. But oh, Now we're talking bass, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole time were you fishing? <clears throat> yeah, um, mostly fly fishing, like fly I said. Fly fishing, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've bass fished my entire life here and there, but not. I didn't take it very seriously. Um and then, you know, the college thing wasn't working out for me, regular college. And my dad sat down with me one day. He's like, you got to figure something out. And I knew of a hardcore band from Orange County that had a lot of uh, hairdressers in it, two of them. And um, Let me so guess. Javier? That'd be him. What band did you play? Mistake? No, uh, The Hands of Glory. You played in that band? <laughs> Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, fucking Javier, dude. That's so funny. This is going to be a funny hardcore podcast. Well, this part, too, is like, (laughs) so I uh, I told my dad I I thought I wanted to do hair for a living, and uh, I went to... Oh, you did hair? Yeah, I still do. You're a hairdresser? Yes, sir. Did you know that I used to own a hair salon? I didn't. Javier knows that, too. Jesus, how many things in common are we going to have? I don't know, man. Maybe we should touch tips. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um so here's a funny little backstory when this studio was being built my wife's hair salon was being built so we were it was right in La Habra. Got so it. we were building the hair salon when he was building the studio nick so he helped me and i helped him kind of like do electrical and shit um yeah my wife's been doing hair for like fucking 15 20 years 15 years wow yeah I'm, I'm hitting year 14 no way dude yep fuck where do you work at uh I'm a director at Bellis Academy in San Diego. And we oh, have, you teach? I don't teach anymore. Um, you did teach. I'm managing the schools now. Yeah, I did no, teach that's for a long time. that's fucking sick, dude. Yeah. So, but when I was 
trying to figure this thing out. I went and I was touring schools and I looked at one in San Diego and I walked in and lo and behold, there's Javier Van Hus as an educator there. And I'm like, this is where I need to go. And, um, so that's how we became friends and that's how the hands of glory started. And, um, along, I guess the years, um, that's where I met my wife at hair school as well. Does she do hair too? Uh, not anymore. She did for a little while, but it's, it's kind of hard to make a living with two hairdresser salaries. Right. Um, so which is like a key point because like my wife only works two days a week because having three boys is like fucking, I'm sure, you know, like you can't have your wife working hairdresser style. It's like a commission. Well, not a commission, but it's like it could hit and miss. Definitely. You're yeah. paying rental for booth, whatever the fuck, you know, you pay. Yeah. And it, I mean, you get out whatever you put into it. You know, I was working 12, 13 hour days for years, just trying to build a clientele. And, um, I knew I always wanted to be an educator. I, I watch Hav and other friends of mine teach and it just looked like a lot of fun. Um, but so back to fishing, <laughs> let me think here. Oh yeah. So that's where I met my wife and, um, you moved it. You were working in San Diego. Yep. Okay. And, um, her brother and her dad big in saltwater fishing. And, um, so I went on vacation with them once and my father-in-law was throwing these little swim baits in, uh, Oceanside Harbor. And I was like, that's never going to work. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> that's just not going to work. And, um, pitched out one that he tied on for me and I caught one on the first cast and continued to catch him the entire time. And I was just so stoked about it. You know, it triggered, Um, it triggered like your fishing backup, everything. Yeah, man. I mean, I just, that's all I wanted to do after I, I had that one experience, I was hooked. And so it went from that to calico fishing with my buddy Bryden and, um, we'd go out as often as we could. And that's still probably my favorite fish to catch. Calico. Yeah. Um, but, you do a lot of fishing in Oceanside though? Uh, not anymore. No, because I'm in Marietta now. You know, what do you, I've, where do you fish usually? Uh, Lake Skinner, Diamond Valley, okay. Paris. Oh, so you don't do much. You, you lived in Oceanside for a minute. I didn't live there. That's, I'm sorry. You that, lived. That's the, where we went on vacation. Okay. Um, but I would fish out of, uh, Mission Bay okay. and San Diego Bay. All right. Um, and so, <clears throat> but when I was out fishing for these calicos, I'd throw these big MC swim baits on war baits heads and, um, it worked out really well. I loved it. And my buddy Bryden, who I was fishing with a lot in the salt, went on, he went to visit his sister in Minnesota and he came back. And when he was there, he was fishing for largemouth bass. And he's like, you got to try this out. And so we went to Hodges one day and, uh, I think what we were doing was drop shotting and <clears throat> it's my main technique. Right. <laughs> I mean, it produces, so, um, but we caught like four or five fish each within a few hours before we had to go to work. And so that changed how I looked at bass fishing, you know? Um, and then you fast forward a few years and we had gotten into tournament fishing. Um, we, we were in a, a San Diego bass club and we were doing tournaments once a month and that's the route I was going to go originally. Do you want to be a tournament fisherman? That was like, that's what I'm going to do. That's it. You know, the goal is to get a boat and, you know, get sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. um, The whole thing. And April of 2014. Yeah, that's right. 2014. um, My first kid came. And before she came, me and my wife had these conversations about like how fishing was going to go. Because I was gone pretty much every weekend, all weekend fishing. And I can't wait to hear this. Well, we came up with a plan. I'm like, I have to be able to get out on the water at least once a week. And then I'm going to do the tournament thing still. Cause I just got myself a boat. And then Avery was born and the first tournament came and I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, what kind of boat did you buy? If you don't mind me asking, or did you have, it's a, I still have, it. it's a 2004 nitro, not nitro sorry nitro owns um champion no well nitro and tracker are the same okay. company and so tracker is the main owner so it's a tracker avalanche 
it looks like a fiberglass boat, but it's actually pressed aluminum. Really? And so Tracker stopped making them, I think, in 2006 because they were selling so many of them, they stopped selling the nitros. They just weren't selling anymore. No way. Yeah, because they're bulletproof. Um, I was really lucky to find this one. I got a great deal. And I got it from a tournament fisherman out in Hemet. So, um, but yeah, so when I had, when we had Avery, I just didn't want to be gone every weekend. I wanted to be home, you know, and I could, I could definitely relate to that. That was like when I had my first son and I was playing in hardcore bands. I said, fuck playing in this band. I don't want to play it no more. It's the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. could, I could definitely re- relate to that and that, that same sense. Now this fucking guy's bigger than me and I don't want to choke him out most of the time but <laughs> right <laughs> you know but i i get what you're saying your, your first kid it's like you never want to be gone from them dude yeah it was weird i mean if uh if you said that i was going to make that choice before we had her i'd been like no that's not going to happen but <laughs> um so i had a lot of free time you know nap time and uh you know tummy time all those things and i had a block of basswood in my garage and one day I picked it up and I just started whittling away. And that was almost six years ago now. And <clears throat> 86 Bates was born, you know. It's turned into something that I never would have imagined. But. Which is a cool story to hear. You're a hairdresser. I mean, f- you do hair. Yep. And you fucking carve Bates. Like, it's it's a cool fucking story. Like It's all the same. You know? I mean, if you ask me, like, hair's a fabric, wood's a fabric, everything has three dimensions you know it's essentially but i guess in fishing how many dudes are you gonna find that do hair oh not many i don't i only know one but in hardcore i'll find fucking 25 of them tons of them so it's a different story like where you won't you won't meet i'm not shocked by that at all because i know a million dudes that do hair but if you're fishing and you go like i do hair for a living i do women's hair people would probably be like are you fucking kidding me it's a little different, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, is it not true? I mean, really, like you know, right? You would never think that. I don't. It doesn't shock me one fucking bit. Like, I okay, cool. Usually, when a dude goes, yeah, I listen to all these bands. I'll be like, all right, what do they do? Are they graphic designer? Do they do hair? Do they, you know, an Orange County guy, especially because a lot of them did hair. Yep. You know, so I mean, uh, it's cool to hear like you. You just kind of said, hey, I'm going to carve a fucking bait. Um, when you carve that first bait, where did you look for information on the internet? Um, <clears throat> most of my information first came from, uh, undergrounds and, uh, the grassroots section, I think it is. Okay. Um, and it's just a bunch of dudes kind of throwing around questions. What, what material do you use for this? Um, like how do you ballast this or, you know, whatever. Um, so that, and I think the first time I got interested in making baits, I was watching a show called Hunt for Big Fish with Larry Dahlberg. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was working with Alumalite. And so it kind of shows you step by step how to use resin and silicone and all these things. Um, And yeah, that's kind of how it all got started. But a lot of my information came from Swimbait Underground originally because those were the big bait dudes, right? And that's, uh, there were a lot of bait makers actually that were born from that grassroots section. And it's cool because, uh, I mean, if you guys listen back to podcast, we had Chris talk about people that kind of grew from the, the form. Yep. And you're one of those guys. Yep. Definitely. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so when you first started, uh, are, do you paint them too? I do. Yep. Airbrush everything. Yep. What kind of clear do you like to use on the bait? Uh, I use, I've been using a, a rattle can from Spray Max. It's Is a, it an epoxy, like a two-part epoxy? Yeah, you break okay. the that little canister on the yeah. inside, and, and it works pretty good. Um, I've <clears throat> I've dabbled in some other airbrush uh, epoxies or clear coats, and um, one day I just got sick of destroying all my guns, you know. And so this stuff's pretty <laughs> bulletproof. I like it a lot. It works good. And do you... Uh do you do them? Um, uh, the, the carving's pretty like you do, you do a lot of carving to your bait. Yeah, like I feel scales and stuff. Like there's a lot to it. Right. It's so, a little different than a lot of baits. Like I've seen, like for instance, I had Caesar on here. He kind of does a different bait than you. Completely different. Yours is like a little, little more like a fish, an actual fish. That's the goal, right? Anyway, yeah. yeah with um, with my style of bait. Um, Originally, I was hand carving everything, right? You know, mm-hmm. you have to try to balance it. And um, 
I mean, nature's imperfect, so that's okay. But I was talking to Andrew Hinkle one day, and he was telling me that I should start over, carve a new a new master, but only do one half. He's like, you should get it scanned and then uh, reverse engineered, and then you'll have a perfect model, and it, you'll have all the detail from your hand carving. And I'd never thought about that before. Um, but it changed everything for me because now I have, you know, like 15, 20 different models that I can offer that are at the click of a button. Um, whereas before I'd be hand carving each, each one. And I don't understand. I'm sorry. So you had one, yeah, you sent into the person to have it reverse engineered. Yeah. So I carved one side perfectly, right? Oh, okay. And okay. Okay. They scanned that and then they just reverse engineered it. So they mirrored it on the other side. Okay. Um, and then he gives me a file and okay. the other part of 86 baits it's my cousin chris feely um he's an engineer so he knows how to run all those programs and so we kind of go back and forth on what ideas would work and like maybe we should cut here or here and this should be a straight joint and not this type of joint and um it's been a huge blessing because it, i can get baits out a lot faster whereas before it was just all trial and error you know yeah so so do you do everything uh do you is it like it's still poured? Everything's still poured the same way? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So but you have like 15 different molds that you do for for certain baits. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> each one of those will come out perfectly balanced and even. You know, the same thing that's on the, or the whatever's on the right side will be on the left side. Exactly. That's that's really cool. I never even thought about that. Yeah. A lot of guys <laughs> are doing it now. Um, is it? And is it a big thing? Yeah. Who I mean, does it for you? Is it Roe that does it? Uh, no. I, I've talked to Jake a couple okay. of times, but... um. I used one of Andrew Hinkle's friends okay. uh, to get the scanning done, but yeah. all, all of the, the 3D work is done by my cousin, Chris. He flips the image? He cuts them. He expands oh, okay. them. He shrinks them. You know, whatever I need to Wow, happen. dude. That's sick. It is, because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> that's he, even better, right? It's amazing, yeah. <laughs> and he loves to help out. Um, and he's actually working on some baits of his own right now that are pretty cool. I've never seen anything like them, so those will be coming out pretty Damn. soon. Do you use uh, screws to uh, make your uh, hinges, or do you use like a, a twisted stainless? Uh, screw eyes, screw yeah, eyes, screw eyes okay. and pin. Okay, yeah, system for everything so far. Um, but you know, I'm waiting for that one innovative idea to come to me, something that nobody's seen, something that's different. And it's tough because there are so many baits out there, you know, and you've seen it evolve over the last six years. Oh yeah, I mean. When did you start like uh, gaining some traction? Maybe you know, like because you've been doing it for a minute, so you kind of saw the whole Instagram thing come about. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so let me think here. I got an I got an Instagram because people were telling me that I needed I needed to show my baits off. I never had one. I didn't have Facebook either. Um, <clears throat> it's not really my thing, but so it's so hardcore, bro. I guess so. <laughs> I, just, just it, I just like <laughs> I would see all these people with their face down in their phone walking across the street not knowing if they're going to get true. hit by a car and just like man wake up you know um but yeah uh it's changed a lot there's a lot more people making baits now you know um I think my third year in I had I was on my second version of my shad glide and uh, my buddy Trevor, he's he's uh, one of the reasons that 86 is so successful because at the time he was fishing three or four times a week, and I could give him a bait and he could go out and tell me if it was going if it was working or if it wasn't, what changes I would have to make. Um, and he was like, "You should probably make your own like 86 baits account." And so I did that. I got rid of my personal account. Um, <clears throat> Does he, does he like a buddy that lived by you or somebody you grew up with? Yeah, he lives um, maybe 10 minutes from me. I, I didn't grow up with him. I met him on Underground as well. Okay. Uh, I bought a bait from him off the black market, and he happened to be in the area. I was like, do you want to meet up and just grab a beer, and then I'll grab the bait from you. And then from there, it turned into a, a friendship. You know, he's one of my closest friends. That's cool, man. Um, and his whole family fishes. I, <laughs> I took my dad on a vacation last year. And I was at a spot right before Bishop and 
I see this guy get out of the car. He's got this really weird dorky hat on. I knew immediately <laughs> it was Trevor's dad. Just <laughs> randomly ran into him, but... Oh, um, that's funny, dude. <laughs> but I guess I guess that's about when 86 started to get some real traction. And I think the biggest point for me was when Underground asked if I wanted to do a collaboration with them. Because how, how What year was that? The first? Because you'd done a couple, right? That was 2018. Yeah, okay. I've done two of them. That was 2018. So were you like, what the fuck? I was, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember kind of going through you look at all the pages nation underground um universe all of them but underground to me was always like the one you know that was the the model and i got that message and i was like wow this is crazy you know and i only i think the first one was 22 baits only and they sold out in like a minute and a half or something and that was a huge deal how long did it take you to make those baits <clears throat> mm, maybe three three or four months. I mean, it took a long time because I, I commute from Marietta to San Diego to go work. Um, I have, if I'm lucky on the weekends, maybe five or six hours where I can work on baits, you know, kids, wife, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And those wives are getting the fucking way. Dude. <laughs> I'm just fucking. Around. No, I know. She was like, she was talking to me before I was coming in here and she's like, I better get a shout out. I'm like, you will. Cause there's no way. Like, if she wasn't watching those kids, I wouldn't be right. Making these what baits. do you think what's happening right now, dude? Exactly. You think I'm for my mom's, my fucking wife's at home watching all the boys. And then when you get there too, you're exhausted and they're like, I'm done. See you later. You know, it's your turn. But, um, right. That's the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. But I appreciate it though. She, uh, 86 is impossible without my wife. But um, so I did that release with uh, Swimming Underground. And then, you know, the follower, I got all these followers and um, a ton of fan base. And people asked me when the next release was going to come. And the glide bait, it's been through three different carvings. And wow. I can't tell you how many different molds, even on the third version, until we finally got it right. And so I released it for the first time this year with swim bait underground uh just about a month ago and we did 50 baits and those sold out in like 20 or 30 seconds and the fuck dude? i couldn't believe it i mean i still can't believe it man. <laughs> now how long did those 50 baits take you was it quicker no it i mean it could have been quicker i think if i wasn't working so much this year yeah. like career working you know um but no, that took quite a while. It took a long time. There, there were some pieces that we were working out because that one, uh, they're not painted. Even though it, it looks like a wrap kind of, but it's not a wrap. It's something different that I've been working on with Underground. And um, I think. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, I think it's going to transform the did way. You, did you sell it with that that design on it? Mm -hmm. What you're talking about? Yep. But it's something new. I think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a <clears> lot of guys doing it. Can you um, talk about it? Or is it kind of like hush know, hush until like someone releases it i think so okay. um you know this is something that i've been working on with chris purcell for quite a while and it took a while to get it right but we did and i think we nailed it um and it's gonna transform the way that i'm making baits i think it's gonna streamline the process quite a bit make it a lot quicker i think yeah. so yeah that's fucking sick dude yeah man I want to know now. <laughs> Listeners want to know, bro. I'm just fucking with you. Call hardcore Chris. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. So, I mean, it's been so since 2014 till now. You're kind of like, that's how long I've been making beats. Yep. You've done two with Swimming Underground. Yep. How much have your sales gone up since the first one released? Like, have has it been a big demand or? Yeah, I mean, the demand has been there since the first, like, a lot of demand since the first swim bit underground release. Um, but my circumstances haven't changed. You know, I got, I had a different position at work. I moved up. And so, uh, along with that more workload, more hours, all those things. Um, <clears throat> so I appreciate having the demand, but I can only make them the hours that I have on the weekends, you know? So, but I'm uh, still working on my, I'm working on a new wake bait right now, pouring them. And so hopefully be painting in the next two weeks. What's your uh, biggest fish you've caught on some, or people have caught even on your on your baits? So I got a buddy from San Diego that's, his name's Dean. Um, he's got a nine and some change on nice. my second version of the Glide Shad. And my buddy Mike from Fishwell, I don't know if you've heard of Fishwell. Mm -mm. Um, 
he's got a eight and some change and i forget it was a san diego lake as well wow um and then i got a buddy chad that was out in texas he recently moved but he had an eight and a nine on my multi-joint um and i've seen some decent fish there's an eight that came from florida there's a guy from florida that I mean, every time he goes out, he sticks a giant for the most part. You'll, he's been in the Bassmaster magazine no a way. few times at the very end. They have all those big fish from all over the country. And I, I just got a, a magazine in this week, and he's in there with an 11-pounder on a UFO bait. Oh, uh, i seen that. What's the guy's name? Uh, Brian Vaughn. A uh, white dude wears gla- glasses, yeah. Yeah, Bass Bass 68 is his yeah, name yeah, on yeah, yeah. Instagram, yeah. He's a Do stick. you talk to the UFO bait guy and you like talk to the other bait makers? Yeah, as much yeah, as yeah, I can. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, um, I try to anyway. It's a community and I want to keep it that way, hopefully. Um, I was just talking to UFO the other day. He's got a daughter around the same age as my oldest, so we were talking about getting them together to go fishing. Yeah, um, that's cool, man. So maybe in the next few weeks and. Um, I saw Andrew Hinkle a couple weeks ago. We went and watched the Ohio State versus Clemson game. Um, yeah, I love hanging out with everyone in the industry. You know? Yeah. What's your uh, local lake you like to fish? Skinner? Mine's Skinner, yeah. Mainly convenience. You know, it's 10 minutes from my house. So. Do you take the boat and go? Usually, yeah. I haven't been out there in a while, <clears throat> but usually. Do you know the guys at the dock? I think it's Tyler. I and, don't. And uh, Frank. Yeah, I don't talk to them very often. And they're yeah. super fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I went there like a month ago. Okay. I went there and I went with this guy, uh, uh, Jose from uh, Save on Tackle, Big Bait Junkie. Oh, yep, yep. And he caught like a fucking nineteen pounder striper on my boat. Oh, really? <laughs> Piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was There's like, some man. giants in there, man. Dude, I couldn't believe it. Like it was fucking huge. Yeah. I think, what was it on? It was on a Nate's bait. Night. Was it? I think so. I'm wow. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an eight, eight inch Nate's bait, I think. Uh, it was fucking big. I couldn't believe it. When I saw it, I was like, fuck, that's the biggest freshwater fish I've ever seen on my boat. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, there's, I've caught some really good stripers. My best swim bait fishing day ever. <clears throat> <clears throat> One of the first swim baits I bought was uh, that Spro. It's like a. The BBZ? Yes, that one. Which one was it? The Zero? It was six inch. Trout colored. I don't remember, man. I, I bought two of them. I bought a floater and a slow sink. And me and my friend Blake were out there, and we rented a boat. I didn't have a boat at the time. And we were at the inlet. The water's coming in. And it w- it looked like um, you see on fishing TV shows, tuna busting on bait. Yeah. The whole area was just covered Fuck, in stripers. Dude. And you'd see these, these bait fish coming down the inlet, and then they'd dump into the lake, and it would turn back on. And so every single cast, we were hooking up on those BBZs. And uh, they were like in, anywhere in between 6 and 10 pounds. It was a solid fish. Um, and I, I remember I cast it off the floating one, and I was watching it come back down. I'm like, oh, we're going to get it. And then a striper came up and took it. <laughs> <laughs> but You eat those fuckers or no? No, I don't. No. No. No, I... It, most of the fish, I guess, that I eat these days or whatever the Purcells give me because they're out all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude, his brother's like the big tuna guy, right? Yeah, and their dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you hunt too or no? I don't. No. no. I've not really had the opportunity, I guess. I mean, I would, but I just have never been. Got to find the time, huh? Yeah. You have a boy and a girl or just a boy? Two or girls. Just, uh, two girls. Oh, two wow. Two girls, Look Avery it. and Sophie. Wow, dude. Yeah, that was it. Did you yeah. cut it? You cut? You cut the gates already? Yep, I did. I got to do that this year. I'm gonna be fucked. It was the worst. <laughs> Don't tell me that, the bro. The worst. Dude. Really? Yep. Dude, I heard it's easy. I feel. I heard it feels like a rubber band now. Bam, done. <clears throat> Unless I, I don't know. Why it was the worst for me? The process afterward is fine. It's before the anticipation. <laughs> really? And then the two shots they give you in to, your nuts to numb you. Yes. Oh my god! I don't even want to think about it, dude. Mm-hmm. It was fun. I don't. I don't smoke ever. But I. They don't give you anything. You go in. You're awake the whole time. And so I did that day before you went in. Yeah, and I walked in. I was like, "Let's fucking do this, dude. I'm ready." <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, I got to do that too. That's too. That's cool. You didn't want a boy. I did. Um, when I had my first girl, I mean, that's all I wanted, right? That yeah, was, yeah. I want a fishing buddy and uh, somebody to teach the guitar to and all these things. I have all these band shirts I've been saving since <laughs> I was in high school for him, you know. Like what? 
Uh, Let me hear. I mean, you name it: disembodied, oh, cave man. in, integrity. Oh, shit. Um, all the West Coast. I mean, pretty much every West Coast band that played every, anytime they played. Eighteen Visions, Bleeding Through. Um, some of my favorite ones are Hemp's or T-shirts. Hemp's. Fuck, you're going deep, bro. Dude, I mean, all that good stuff, and I still have them all. Show of hands. You weren't a, you weren't a big posy guy, huh? You didn't like not much. you like the heavy like uh I can tell because I'm like the shit that I also like was like uh buried alive I love buried alive I love uh show of hands I loved um carry on well oh, I knew yeah. I'm buddies with Corey yeah I was in a band with fucking Corey so it was like yeah he's, he's uh with T J Hooker Todd Jones I've been, I'm fucking, oh yeah fuck him <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, so I had all this stuff, and then, you know, we decided we were going to have a kid, and we found out it was a girl, and at first I was bummed. I was like, ah, Really? Man. Yeah, a little bit. Just, yeah. Um, I grew up with a brother, and me and my dad and him did everything together, you know? <clears throat> and then when we had her, I was like, I'm super stoked to have another girl. You know, that's what I want now, so that they can have the same thing me and my brother did growing up. Um, and... Nothing's changed, man. Um, my Avery, she loved, and Sophie, actually, both of them, they love heavy music. <laughs> Sophie's favorite is Slayer. Um, and my oldest one, right now, she's really into August Burns Red. Um, but, and then they love to fish. I mean, if. Oh, that's even better. If there's one thing that's that they want to do. That's one thing that's neutral is you, you don't need to be a boy or a girl. Like, anyone can fish. So it's like. A yeah. girl can, they can fish with you all the time. It doesn't fucking matter. They love it. Look man. at Ben Seacrest, man. You know who Ben Seacrest is? Sounds familiar. He's a, like a huge calico guy. Like he's one of the OG, he's like worked for AFCO, like all kinds of companies. Okay. He has two daughters that fish with him that are, I think, like really good anglers. Yeah. Bobby Martinez, same thing, his daughters. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Fishing's fishing, you know? Yeah, and they love it, man. Yeah. They're, they're super stoked on their pink baits that I make them. You know, that's oh, they, do you make them a pink bait? Pink and glitter and all I, this I, stuff. Who had the... Did you have the video or UFO baits had him and his daughter? That was that was UFO. Dude, that's a sick video. Yeah. Where his daughter's catching the bait, the fish on the bait. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, she's casting. She's doing it all. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to that same spot. Oh, really? And take our kids, yeah. Oh, that'd be fun, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I saw that video. I'm like, fuck, that's what it's all about right there. It's so cool, yeah, man. I, yeah. I sent it to so many people like, dude, check this out. This is amazing. Um, but yeah, so I did want a boy and then I'm just super stoked on my two girls. You know, I wouldn't change any of it. Um, but that was it. Yeah. You think about like future two college tuitions and two weddings. Hopefully those will be the only two, you know? <sighs> Hopefully so. they'll be the only two. Fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I got I got a 15, 9, and a 2-year-old. I got them spread out like a fuck. Jeez, man. Right? Hands full. E, do you know who's the worst? No, I don't. 15. Really? He's supposed to be the helping hand. He's <laughs> helping his hand in his pants. <laughs> no, he's he's a he's he's a He's a good looking tall boy and he's he gets he's he's a handful. Knock before you enter. Just remember that. Good lord. <laughs> he's gonna be so mad we hear this. I call him, I bang on the bathroom door, I go, What's up, master? What's up, master? And he's like, What are you talking about? Master Bader. <laughs> oh, and then and then my nine year old will see him and bang on the door and go, Hey master. And I'm like, dude. Does he know what's going on? He doesn't know. He's just yelling it at him. I'm like, dude, you don't even fucking know. You know, like, but that's the fun. I guess my wife wanted a girl. So, like, we're all boys. So, it's like everything's shit, farts, you know, like hitting each other in the dick, kind of like boy shit, you know? Oh, yeah, I do. My So, my mom. You know, I mean, you have fucking, think about it, having another brother. It's like even crazier, you know, like. My mom got uh, remarried. Oh, I was probably twelve or thirteen, something like that. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, but he had two boys our age, so four boys. Oh fuck me! All dude. the same age. Lived together. Lived together. Oh my god! Fist fights. I Would mean, you fight guys? Fight each other like all the time. Fuck all man. the time. And back then it was like, you know, this is cool. Now you look at my stepbrothers and they're monsters. 
And Are they? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much all of my family is law enforcement now. <laughs> oh, fuck. And they're all huge and very aggressive. And yeah, so I just... I just sit down and take it now. Just walk away, huh? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's fucking wild, dude. Yep. I'm law enforcement. That's what my middle one wants to do. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I, who knows if he's going to fucking do it, but... Yeah, that's cool. My older one plays uh, drums. Yeah. Oh, really? I have a video of me and him playing a First Blood song when he was 10. Wow. Uh, Next Time I See You, You're Dead. And then uh, I have him playing a Carry On song. I've been playing two Pantera songs. His first recital was Cowboys from Hell when he was 10. And then uh, now he just plays drumline. So he's he's still really good at drums, but his whole thing's drumline. That's it. It's amazing. And he started skating. So like he started like skating a little. I'm like, whatever, whatever you want to do. That's kind of part of it too. Yeah. You know, music. And I try to like, I don't want to push my music on him because I want to let him do whatever he wants. He listens to some fucking weird rap mumble shit i don't yeah you know and i'm like oh whatever but then he'll listen to like with his buddies he'll be like hey listen to this band it might be like fucking entombed or some shit like that you know yeah like, and totally. i'll be like oh cool man yeah you know like there's one you there know? we go i'm proud of you <laughs> yeah sometimes i gotta be like yeah i'm kind of proud of you on that one <laughs> yeah every time we get in the car my two i mean as soon as the car turns on dad put on walk Dude, and I think that's every kid that age favorite song. I don't know, man. It, like my nephew, he's kind of starting to hear it a couple, like a few times, and he's getting into it a little bit. But um, yeah, every time we get in the car, that's what they gotta hear. That's the number one song that we play right now. Dude, it, I'm not kidding. Like every kid, hey, my old band Donnie Brook, we covered that for Halloween. I mean, we had Dave Peters fucking sing it. It sounded like Pantera. Well, yeah. I mean, you hear the new, the newer Throwdown Dude. records. I mean, Haymaker. Haymaker is the best. Well, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite Thank one. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> my favorite one is probably uh, only because uh, uh, I've listened to them from like 2000, my 99 was their first album, Beyond Repair. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it sounds like shit, the album. Like it, it's recorded like shit. Just like I've argued with, I, I've argued with Hav about uh, Wrench. You ever heard Wrench? Yeah. So their first album, amazing. Yep. Second album sounds like dog shit, but the music's better. Yep. And he's like, you're, you're fucking crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not. It sounds like fucking shit. I recorded bands before. You ever heard Life or Death? I recorded fucking Life or Death. I yep. fucking know. You know, but me and, but Hav, like, I, we have the same. I like that Queen Anne's Revenge of the beginning with the fucking eerie, eerie dead man's death. Oh, yeah. I'm like, fuck, that is so heavy. Yeah, so Smarter. Awesome. I remember playing, uh, I got to play at Showcase. It was my first band, Hurricane Rana, uh, 12 Tribes. I think it was Poison the Well Martyr. Oh my God. This was 90, uh, like two, 99, 2000 at Showcase. People were crawling out of there. They weren't walking out. Dude, it was heavy. fucking, it was like, I had a video. Uh, you know Zach, Big Zach? Uh, he's the tour manager for Panic at the Disco. No, I don't know him. He, uh, Hav would know him. Uh, he was, he had a video of it and he gave it to me. I'm like, fuck. Now my kids like Panic at the Disco. Like, but it's cool because. We went to see him in San Diego at that. What's that big venue down there? Sports Arena? It's like a college, I think. Oh, there's um, the open air theater at SDSU. Yes. Yeah. So we went there and then he gave us like VIP tickets. So my kids were like, oh my God, fucking flipped out. It's fucking awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, man. yeah. But knowing hardcore dudes is like a biggie. You ever met biggie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, you know. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> All the <laughs> <Derek> dudes. Johnson. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, fuck, man. This has been a fun fucking time talking about the bait. Yeah, man. Out. Yeah. I appreciate you having me on. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just this dude making baits in a garage. So I'm like, what am I even doing here? But I appreciate but you. But no, it's anyway. not. It's more than that. It's more of a, a community. Like what Swim Bait Underground does, what you do, you know, like we're all doing the same fucking thing, something different. Yep. And uh, I just would like to have you on because I, I feel like you did something different. I, it's a cool bait. Awesome. You man. know, Thank like, you. um, so where can, do you have a website? Do you have Instagram? Where can everyone reach you? Um, everything pretty much goes through Instagram. So it's just 86 baits. Um, All right. I do have a website, but when I have baits or anything available, um, I'll open it up. And then when they're all gone, I close it down until Good I have call. more. Yeah. Yeah. Any, so, uh, shirts or anything available yet or now? Uh, those, uh, right. As I was driving over here, the new shirts are uh, being printed right now. So. Okay. So last question. What does 86 baits mean? I was born in 1986, wow. um, and 
growing up, my dad, like if he had passwords for something, it always involved that. And like, he would tell me this, that, or the other, everything was always 86. Um, <clears throat> and another thing about that is my grandparents, his, his parents owned a Chinese restaurant for 65 years. And whenever they'd run out of something, I'd hear my grandpa scream from the kitchen, 86, this, you know, this, we're out of this. Um, and so, yeah, that's where it came from. That's a cool name, man. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <I appreciate it. laughs> thanks again for coming on. Man. All right, man. Thank you.